Hey guys, welcome to today's episode. And I'm so excited to introduce you to Michelle File. And she actually has lost 80 pounds doing intermittent fasting and a couple other things. And today we're going to find out how she did it. So I'm super excited. Michelle, welcome. Hi. Hi, Chantal. Thank you so much for having me. I am just going to say, I have lost 80 pounds, but they all have not been while intermittent fasting. I do want to make sure everybody knows that intermittent fasting is something that I started doing. Well, let me even backtrack seven yep, years ago. Okay. Yeah. Seven, seven years ago, I did intermittent fasting and I only did it because I saw everyone else doing it and thought it would be a quick fix. I was in that stage of my life that I was looking for quick fixes. And the trouble with that, the problem with that was I just kind of winged it. Like I didn't really know what intermittent fasting was. I didn't know how to do it safely for a woman and it didn't work. It actually backfired. I ended up gaining weight versus losing. So I, I, put that in the trash can and didn't look at it again. And then a couple of years ago, a really close family member of mine had started intermittent fasting and she was just having the most incredible results. And, you know, once you kind of evolve a little bit, I was looking at more than just weight loss. I was like, wow, she looks better. Like her skin, she's glowing. She has so much energy. So I was willing to kind of dig back into it. And this time I did my research. I learned a lot about intermittent fasting. I really dove into there's got to be a difference between fasting for women and fasting for men. I learned a lot about that and implemented intermittent fasting two years ago, which helped me. I think I probably took off another, you know, 10 pounds or so, but really it's more about how I feel now. Like I just feel completely different than I did a couple years ago. I have so much more energy. I'm never bloated and inflamed. My skin's better. So it was just one of those tweaks I made to an already pretty lifestyle, a pretty healthy lifestyle that even elevated it even more. So let's talk about what the day in the life of Michelle looks like. So what do you do in the day? Like, what does your lunch look like? What does your dinner look like? And what are some of these things that you did to help get rid of the bloating and help you feel more healthy? Oh, I love this question. Okay, well, when I first started fast, intermittent fasting, I really followed what a lot of other people do, and they wait, they they wait till twelve o'clock or one o'clock to have their first meal. So for the first few months, even maybe six months, that's what I was doing. And to be honest, Chantal. When I decide I'm going to do something, I want to be the best at it. So when I relate that to intermittent fasting, I was like, I need to go as long as possible every single day. So I was trying to do these 19, 20 hour fasts every single day, which often seemed to backfire on an energy perspective. I was like really dragging by that time. And then I wasn't eating great. I was just kind of shoveling in some food. So I decided, okay, this isn't working. What if I flipped that? What if I actually ate at the top of my day and stopped eating earlier? And that was the magic for me. And I still continue to do that every single day. I do not fast the same every single day. I actually fast with my cycle. So I've really learned from a hormonal perspective for women, it's really important that you're not damaging your hormones with intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is so amazing, but it's a stress on the body, just like exercise is a stress on a body. It's great. It's rising your cortisol and we want that, but we have to be aware of different times of the month where it's not as productive. So my week will look different. So for example, today I'm sort of in a phase of my cycle where I can fast longer. So today I just broke my fast at 19 hours and I had some greens, like sauteed greens with some eggs. I had a bowl of oatmeal and berries and I had a black coffee and water. So that will be like my first meal. My second meal will be this is funny. This is, this is horrible, but I call it like a, a plate of shit. Like literally I go to my fridge and I figure out what's in there and I put everything in a saute pan. So I'll probably do greens. I loved 
I, I am not a cook. I like everything to be so simple. So I buy bagged coleslaw that's already chopped up. I'll throw some of that in a saute pan. I always have pre-cooked protein in my fridge. So right now I have ground turkey. I have some leftover roasted veggies from last night. I'll throw all of that into a saute pan and with some Dijon mustard and sauerkraut. And I will have that big plate. Sometimes I'll have some, uh, organic brown rice cakes with nut butter. Like I really try and stay, um, you know, fairly healthy with my choices, but with, with balance, you know, I had ice cream with my daughter a couple nights ago. Like I try to stay pretty balanced with healthy choices, but also in a sustainable way. And usually my last meal is around you know, three thirty, four o'clock. And that's always a smoothie. It's always like a big smoothie bowl or, um, it's probably my lightest meal. So I've just found for my body, it is better to be sort of top heavy and less and less as the day progresses. Um, and it, that was the best change for me. My energy levels are higher. It's so much easier to maintain my weight and yeah, it's, it's just a great lifestyle for me. I love that. So let's talk about, I totally agree with you about a woman's hormonal cycle. That is so important. And different people think that those days are different. So I want you to really talk about what are the days that you can fast the longer amount of time? And what are the days pretending that, well, not pretending, but making day one, your first day of your period with that being the day, how does your fasting change and what days are easier and what days are harder? Oh, okay. I love this. And I just want to say, I am not a doctor. I am not a nutritionist. <laughs> I'm legit just a girl that has read a lot and listened to podcasts like Chantel's for years and just picked up little pieces here and there. But from what I have researched and from the doctors, functional nutritionists that I trust in your day one to about day 10, we call it sort of the power phase. So this is sort of day one, you've, you're starting to bleed and throughout your, your first little bit of your cycle, you can fast for long periods of time. Your body is really okay with longer fasting. So that's actually where I am right now. So the, over these next 10 days, I do like to get in one 24 hour fast. I really love digging into autophagy. I lost my dad to lung cancer about um, six years ago. So it became really important to me to find different ways that I could, you know, keep myself so healthy. Like what can I do to rid myself of bad cells that are inside my body? And that's really what brought me to intermittent fasting again is that autophagy. So I do like getting in one of those 24 hour fasts. And then the rest of this sort of first phase day one to day 10, I will do 17, 18, you know, some longer stuff. And then we get into a short period of time, about six days, which from the person that I've learned this information from, it's called the manifestation phase, which is obviously when you could ovulate. Um, and there you want to pull, pull back again. You want to go into those like shorter like traditional intermittent fasting. So 13 to 15 hours. Then there's a little chunk of time again that you can go long. You can go another five or six days that you can go in and do another 24 hour fast. You can do 18, 19 hours if it feels good. And then I think the most important phase of your cycle is that last bit, that last seven days. And that is where no fasting like zero <laughs> fasting is what I have learned. Um, that's when we're trying to build progesterone, which is that hormone for women that is keeping us calm and helping us sleep better. And the older you get, your body just doesn't naturally build progesterone. So you kind of want to do whatever you can to help it along. So that's in that last phase. Um, and again, who I learned all of this from, she calls it the nurture phase. So you just sort of think about that. Like, how can I nurture my body that last week before I get my cycle, which is so no fasting. And when I say no fasting, I still rest from food for 12 hours. 
Like I just say that's a non-negotiable. I remember listening to a podcast. I think it was Dr. Stephen Cabral. And he said, if everyone would just rest from food for 12 hours, and that's really just overnight, like it's like, it seems like such a big deal, but it's not a big deal to not eat for 12 hours. Like you, you're sleeping for a lot of it. If everyone would do that, there would be so much less disease because you're just giving your body this nice rest. So when I say no fasting, I'm still doing 12 hours. Like I'm 12 hours without food, but then I'm just having a, a normal day of eating three meals. I'm not a big snacker. I really, I wore a blood, uh, a glucose monitor for several months and realized that snacking was something that was just shooting up my blood sugar all the time. So I really just try to do three meals a day. I love feeling full. Like I love food. I love eating. So little snacks just never work very well for me. So I just like having three big meals and, um, that's, what's worked really well for me. I, I feel so much better following that cycle energy wise. I, my, my cycles, I don't even know they're there. I, like no pain, no cramping. Like it's just completely different for me than when it was before when I was fasting sort of balls to the wall every single day, trying to go longer and longer and longer. I, I really noticed the difference when I made that shift. One of the things that I really want to encourage you guys to do is to be getting at least seven hours of quality sleep every night. I personally need at least eight or eight and a half, but I know it's hard to get that much sleep. Your mind keeps you awake and you just can't get comfortable, but there are hundreds of reasons why you can't get quality sleep. But it is so important because this is how your body heals itself. So if you want to get a better night's sleep, for me, it's getting enough magnesium. And believe it or not, around 75% of people, I think it's even higher than that, don't get enough. And that's what causes sleep problems. So one of the things about this one magnesium that I'm obsessed with is that it actually has seven unique forms of magnesium. And you must get all of them if you want to get that calming, sleep-enhancing effects. And that's why I recommend Magnesium Breakthrough by Optimizers. So all you need to do is take two capsules before you go to bed and you will be absolutely amazed how much better sleep you get. I actually ran out of it um, for like two days and those two days I didn't get good enough sleep. So it literally, I've literally tested it. For our listeners, you are going to get an exclusive offer. Go to magbreakthrough.com slash waste away and you're going to save up to 42%. So make sure you put that coupon code of waste away. Yes. Yeah, so I will share with, with you for me, I am, I don't, I don't think I ever eat in more than an eight to nine hour window for me. Like I couldn't even tell you the last time I ate in like a 12 hour window. And for me, that just does not work because I just, that's just too long of a window because I'm used to eating in a four to six hour window generally. So right. if I then, you know, during that seven days, right before my period, I'm usually eating in an eight to nine hour window that week, right before my period, I just kind of extend it, but about nine hours is the most. And most of the time, it's still only eight hours yeah. during that time. The best time for me to fast is the phase that's called the luteal phase, but it's this phase is right after ovulation and it's before menstruation. And, um, so let's say that like, it just is a portion where your progesterone is really high. So if I would say like, for me day, like 15 to 21, um, would be really good for me. Like, I feel like those are the days I can fast really well. Um, and then sometimes day like five, I, I just, the first couple of days of my period, I just can't do it. I don't know why the day one through five, like a lot of people are like, Oh, day one through five, I can fast and I feel great. I don't. Um, and the reason is, is because your progesterone is extremely low and your estrogen is really low during that time. So for me, 
if you look at any kind of graph, so if you just go and kind of Google um, like progesterone levels, you know, on your cycle, and you'll see the days that your progesterone are the highest. And those are the days for me personally, that when my progesterone is higher, those days, if you look at the graph, that's when are the days that I personally feel like I can fast longer. Yeah. But I, I do, it's learning your body. Exactly. Oh, I'm so glad you said that because I, I have clients that will come to me and say, I don't know how you can do a long fast on day three of your cycle. And I'm like, well, that's just my body. And I am a huge believer in tracking, like just take a month and write down exactly how you're feeling every single day. And you'll start seeing the, the sort of pattern of your own body. For me, for some reason, as soon as I, I hit that day, one of my cycle, it's like, I wake up earlier. Like I, I just, that's just me for some reason. Um, I can really tell when the, the last phase is coming. Like all of a sudden I'm sleeping, my alarm will go off and I want to press the snooze button. Like I can really just feel it in my body. And that is something that I just really believe women have got away from over the last you know, 50 years. We stopped listening to ourselves. Like we started just trying to find the next quick fix, the next plan, the next, you know, meal plan that someone will give us and we can follow step by step. And we lost the art of actually like tuning into our own body, which is always giving us such awesome messages, you know, with something like fasting, you, you really just need to track it and see when do I feel my best? When, when could I prolong this and give myself a little bit more, um, the more benefits from fasting and getting into autophagy. And I think that's great. Like you figured out exactly the best times for you to do it. I think at the end of the day, what's important for women is we just don't fast 18, six every single day of every single month. I think at, at baseline, that's the most important thing to remember is switch it up, listen to your body. Don't try and overdo it just because you want to get to a certain amount of hours. Cause that was me. I will be the first one that will say when I started, that's what I thought I was supposed to do. I thought I was supposed to get to like the longer you go, the better. And that's not true. That's, that's like over-exercising. That's like sleep is for the week. Like all of those silly things we grew up listening to are so crazy. We want to nourish our body in the best way we can. And the only way to do that is to listen to it. One of the things I heard you say was that you came to a place where you really got rid of the bloating. And I think this is a problem with a lot of people is feeling bloated. And so for me, I'll just share a few things that really make me bloated. And then I'd like you to share. So one thing is, is I have eliminated drinking water um, at meals. And every time that I don't do it, I always get bloated. And the reason is, is because you shouldn't be drinking water during your meals because your stomach acid is not going, if you just think about it, right. If you have stomach acid and then you just pour like three glasses of water in your, while you're digesting your food, your stomach acid is not going to be as good, but that's a really big deal for me. Um, beans. I just cannot eat beans. I've beans or lentils there. They've got a lot of great benefits. I don't eat them at all. Um, wheat gets me bloated. And then sometimes if I just have way too many cruciferous vegetables, like at one sitting, like tons of broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, like a bunch of it at one sitting that can really get me gassy and dairy products. So what is it for you that you've kind of said, here's some things that I've eliminated, um, out of my diet because I've realized, you know, I'm going to be a bloated, gassy mess. Yeah. I, I, this is such a good question. Uh, well, sim the simplest things are the ultra processed foods. I mean, that's what I got rid of a long time ago. And, and I still love them. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm a human. Like I love food. I love a bag of Lay's potato chips. No one is ever going to change my mind on that. But when I do allow myself to have anything like that, I am just like, 
my rings won't fit on, like I'm just a mess. So I mean, baseline, and that's really common sense, right? The, the ultra processed foods we need to get rid of, but then deeper than that for me, uh, definitely, um, what I've done is really learned the art of tracking. What I found throughout my life is different vegetables, different foods have affected me at different times. So there was a period of time in my life where cauliflower, it was when cauliflower rice became all the rage. And I was like legitimately eating so much cauliflower rice. And I was walking around so uncomfortable all the time. And I was like, what in the heck is going on? And I, I started to see, oh, it's every single time I have cauliflower rice. Maybe I won't have it tomorrow and see what happens. Oh, interesting. No bloating today. So I've learned to really not every single day. I'm not as obsessive about it, but when I start not feeling my best, I start tracking my food. So just recently raw peppers, like nightshade vegetables really became a problem for me. So I've just like eliminated them and, you know, added in different vegetables, which has been kind of fun playing around with some different things because I kind of had got into the habit of that was my vegetable choices. I was always eating salads. I was always having raw vegetables. And now I'm doing some different things like what I talked about earlier, just sauteing up some veggies instead. It's a big difference. It does. So things like that. The tip you said about water, isn't that the hardest habit to get out of? So hard. You have to literally say to the person who I literally am like, because, you know, restaurants now, they basically bring you water every time, right? Like it's almost like standard. The waitress comes up and she's like, here's some water for you. What else can I get you to drink? And whenever I say like, I just so appreciate you bringing this water to me, but I'm really trying not to drink anything with my meals. Would you mind taking it back or whatever? And they're always, you know, just so nice, but it's a very big problem for me. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I, I did. I guess I started working on that a couple of years ago and I'm still not the best at it. I have a little girl who's, she's just, she loves water. She's always got water everywhere and it's just always there. Plus we've been told drink water, drink water, drink water. So it's almost like this mental shift that you have to make that during mealtimes, it's really not a good idea at all. So I loved that tip as well. That would be something that I would say. But those are the things that really helped me with, with bloating and inflammation and just adding intermittent fasting. Like seriously, when I started a few years ago, intermittent fasting again, I didn't really change much else. I just started intermittent fasting and that was the first side effect I noticed. It wasn't that all of a sudden all these pounds disappeared, not at all, but pants were fitting that didn't fit and it was the bloating and inflammation and it was really just doing some fasting mm -hmm. that helped that. Mm -hmm. I think you gave us some amazing tips today. Tell listeners where they can find you and how they can follow you. Yes. Awesome. Well, I would love, I love connecting with women and just sharing stories and helping them. So please come and find me on Instagram and it's actually at it's Michelle file, or you can come to my website, michellefile.com. Send me an email. I just absolutely love talking to women who are on a health and wellness journey. So definitely come and find me. Uh, well, Michelle, your, just your energy and your vibrance just comes flowing through. And I, it's just been my honor to have you on the show today. And thank you so much for all your tips. This has been wonderful. And you guys stay tuned. We've got another episode coming up in just a few.